So, so far, we've only done mathematics type problems. Okay, so the problems I want to do now are more of a physics kind of engineering based problems. The first few I'm going to show you are kind of my Archimedes principle problems. So, uh, let's begin. If I have a glass of water, okay, or any drink really, and an ice cube, let's say it's a glass of water, an ice cube is floating in the top, something like that, and Let's say that none of this water can escape via evaporation. Okay. Um, what happens to the level of the water after the ice cube melts? Okay. Does it go up? Does it go down? Does it stay the same? So those of you who know Archimedes' principle will know that an object floating in water displays an amount of water which is equal weight to that object. Okay. So that's why only things less dense than water will float. Okay. So, in this case, this ice cube will, in fact, it displaces amount of water, which is equal to uh, this level here of the ice cube, and that amount of water there that it's displaced is equal to the weight of the whole ice cube. So when the ice cube melts, it will turn into water, and that water will fit neatly in that sort of displaced volume there. So in fact, the level of the water won't change, provided nothing can escape by evaporation. Okay, so a similar question, um, maybe we can argue this one a bit more mathematically. Is Let's say that you're in a lake, in a boat, something like this. Okay, and you have an anchor on board. Okay, so here's an anchor. All right. First question. If you throw that anchor overboard, what happens to the level of water on the edge of the boat? So does the water rise to here or does it sink to somewhere like here? Okay. And this is pretty simple to argue. So initially, the weight of water displaced is kind of equivalent to um, all this volume of water here, excluding your legs and the anchor. Okay. So that weight of water will have to be equivalent to the boat, you, and the anchor. Okay. Once you throw the anchor overboard, it doesn't really matter that the an anchor displaces some of the water in the lake. That would be quite minimal, and it won't really have an effect because you'll be floating on the surface always. So once you throw the anchor overboard, you're in fact going to move up with, uh, with respect to the level of the water. So the level of water will go down on the side of your boat. Okay. And the reason for this is you have to only displace as much water as now your weight and the weight of the boat, not the weight of the anchor as well. Okay. So a follow-on question to this, it's not really much harder, is can you argue reasonably what will happen to the level of the water relative to the you know, bank of the lake? So I've drawn a sort of straight bank like this, or swimming pool, whatever you want to call it. So will this level of water go down, or will it go up? Okay, it's reasonable to argue this. So you really want to talk about the change in volume, or sort of change in um, volume, including kind of the displaced volume. Okay, so including this volume here. Okay, so initially you have displaced a volume, so this is kind of like an added volume of, um, which is equivalent to uh, kind of the, the boat and the anchor's weight. Okay. Once you throw the anchor overboard, then this level will go down. And in fact, it will go down by the equivalent volume that's equal to the weight of the anchor. Okay, the equivalent volume of water that's equal to the weight of the anchor. So let's say, um, let's just talk about sort of, um, let's just talk about mass here because uh, everything is in a uh, gravitational field at g. Okay, so the acceleration due to gravity is g downwards. So when we throw this anchor overboard, what do we say? We said that the, the level of displaced water will go down by a volume equivalent to the weight of the anchor. So the mass of the anchor, let's call it ma, 
and the volume of water that's equivalent to that is the mass of the anchor divided by the, the density of water. Okay, and that's going down. There will still be a small increase though, and the small increase in the uh, sort of level in the water is because now when the anchor is at the bottom of the lake, it's being, you know, it's displacing a, uh, a volume of water equivalent to its volume. Okay, and its volume, if we if we use the same sort of um, same sort of conditions here, it's just its mass divided by its density. So this is the density of the anchor, the mass of the anchor. So that adds to the level of the water. This takes away from the level of the water. And actually, we can see that that is clearly um, going to be a negative number because we can take out the mass of the anchor. And then it's just 1 over the density of the anchor, which we can assume to be iron. I mean, it sinks, so it's got to be more dense than water, more denser than water. So minus 1 over the density of water. OK. And this number is clearly going to be positive because this is going to be bigger uh, than this here. Sorry, it's going to be negative. This will be a negative number. So the level of the water will go down because this is kind of the change in volume of, of sort of displacement. Okay, so change in the volume of kind of displaced water. And in fact, this is negative, so the level goes down. Okay, cool. So let's move on now. Let's maybe talk about Archimedes' principle. Can we prove it? That's a good question. Can we prove Archimedes' principle? So let's say, let's talk about the sort of floating example. Let's just use a block this time. Okay, let's maybe just talk about a, a cube, make it simple. Okay, there's a cube floating in the water. Okay, up to level. Okay, something like that. So why does it float? Well, there must be a balance of forces here somewhere. So let's take our density, let's go call this density, um, let's call it density B for the block. Okay, and so if we consider the lengths of this cube to be just L, then we can say density times volume, Lb, times the volume, which is going to be L cubed, because I said it was a cube, uh, times G. That will be the weight going downwards. Now on the top, we the only force we have would be the atmospheric pressure, okay, multiplied by the by the sort of uh, cross-sectional area of this block, which is just L squared. On the bottom, though, we'd have this added pressure. So we would have the pressure uh, due to the atmosphere, because we're still under the atmosphere. But we'd also have a rho g h. Okay? And that h there is the depth um, at which this pressure is acting. Okay? So this is the change in pressure, the added pressure from being this depth below the surface of the water. And we need to multiply that by L squared as well. So we can see that we've got a pressure pushing down on the top, a pressure pushing up from the bottom. And, and actually, this atmospheric pressure is the same on the top and the bottom. So we can just cancel it already. Then if we equate these two expressions, so this here is the density of water or whatever fluid you're in, um, then we can see that we get rho w g h l squared is equal to rho b, so the density of the block, times its volume times g. So this is just the weight of the block. And you can see that this is, in fact, the weight of the displaced water. So uh, this will just be the volume because the cross-sectional area is l squared and the height. This is just a prism, right? It's a sort of cuboid. Um, the height is actually just h. So that's just the volume of the water displaced times its density gives the mass of the water times g gives the weight of the water. So that's a proof of Archimedes' principle, Okay, at least for a block. If you want to prove it for a more complicated object, uh, you can do that. But uh, let's not bother here. OK, so 
This is a proof of Archimedes' principle. Can we actually use this in a problem now then? So what about if I choose a slightly different scenario? Let's say we have the same tank of water, but this time we don't just fill it up with water. We fill it up with water up until a point, and then we fill it up with oil. Let's say that. Okay, and a new block, I'm still going to just call it row, row B block, is submerged, but it's actually got a density that means that it just sort of floats with a proportion alpha of its depth in the water. So this is the water, row W, and this is the oil, row oil. Okay, this is the block, row B. Okay, so the question is, can you express the density of the block in terms of the density of the water and the density of the oil and alpha? And yeah, you should be able to do this. So if we think about the pressure on the top of the block now, it would just be atmospheric pressure plus, um, we can call this just a height h, it doesn't really matter, it's going to go away in a minute, the uh, density of the oil times G times H. Let's call this H. Okay, so it's going to be that's going to be kind of added pressure on the top. Okay, so it's these two added together times L squared that gives you the sort of pressure force on top of the block. If we think about the bottom of the block, then we actually have a depth of alpha in the water and a depth of um, one minus alpha times L or something, or L for L, we should really call this L for L, um, and a depth of 1 minus L for L um, in the oil. But we're really interested in what you don't have um, that you did have up here. So for instance, you're still going to get an atmospheric pressure. You're still going to get that added pressure from being below the oil. But then you're going to get an even, uh, another little bit of pressure, 1 minus alpha times L from being that depth deeper in the oil. Okay, rho oil G H. Okay, and then you're going to get alpha rho W, the density of water, times G H. You're going to get this added pressure, sorry, alpha L. So that should be an H there, that should be an L, sorry. And that shouldn't be an H there either, sorry. Okay, so this is your added pressure from being below that extra depth of uh, oil. And this is your added pressure from being below that extra depth of water. Okay. And when we consider these pressures that you have on the top and the pressures you have on the bottom, the only ones that you have on the bottom that you don't have on the top are these two. Okay. This atmospheric pressure, the, depth, the pressure due to the depth of oil on the top surface, they both have that, that pressure. So all we need to do is multiply this expression by L squared, okay, that gives us our pressure upwards, our, our net pressure upwards, and that's got to be equal to the weight downwards. So that would be the density of the block um, times G times L cubed. Okay, so let's do that. I think we're actually going to get an L cubed in both these expressions here, see, because we've got an L here, an L here, and an L squared on the outside. So if we cancel the L cubed, and actually we've got a G all over this expression. In fact, we can write this. The density of the block is equal to 1 minus alpha times rho oil plus alpha times rho water. So you can use this if you know two pressures. You know the density of water and you know the density of this oil to gauge this density of the block. Of course, it has to float somewhere in the middle if it falls right into the the water or just floats on the surface of the oil then well you could do, you could do it if you if it floats to the surface of the oil you can certainly work it out but if it sinks into the water then then you need to use another fluid to uh, to sort of balance it out okay so that's great cool all right so let's do some more pressure problems next time <laughs>